G'day everyone, and welcome to Griffinix Tabletop Miniatures. In this video, I shall be building and kit bashing this Leagues of Votan Uthar the Destined or Karl model into a perhaps slightly more unique Karl model. Let's get into it. Yes, it's time to build my third Carl model. So we'll get everything out of the box. Have a little quick look at this. Not that we really need to look at that. There's only so much information we can learn from it. Anyway, move that aside. Let's have a look. If any of you watched the previous video, you will know that I've already taken some bits off here to do kit bashing with my Iron Here Champion. And as you can see, I even have the Rocky bit from the Iron Here Champion for the base for this Carl kit bash instead. So I think I'll start by actually gluing that to the base. And in the meantime, I'll just move these two heads and head piece or crest just up there so we can see that they're there and what I'm going to do with this. Now I'm just going to check see if I've cleaned this up. I haven't. So let's um let's start the cleaning work before we do too much else because it kind of has to be done and better I get it done now than later. Sorry about that everyone. I'm just adjusting the camera. If I made any of you lose your lunch, I apologise. Can be quite janky. So I'm just going to clean up this. Now I know there's a hole in the middle that the uh, the foot from the Iron Here Champion has a little keyed bit uh, to help it balance uh, in place. I'm not going to worry about that being there or filling it in or anything until later, because depending on how I put the model on, it may even be covered anyway. So you know, I'm not too worried about that. But if you are, if you want to follow what I've done with this model at any time, if it makes you feel more comfortable to fill that in with some uh, green stuff or milliput, or even uh, Vallejo plastic putty or um, anything else of the sort, Tamiya uh, putty, etc., go ahead. You know, if that's what you feel comfortable, uh, more comfortable doing, then uh, do it by all means. But what I intend to do. Just leave it for now. Put some glue on here. And just sit it like that for a moment. While it softens that up, I'll begin to cut out a couple more parts from the model. Now I'll take the, uh, the instructions and just move them aside a bit and just sit them there. Oh, in front of me, so I can still see what I'm doing. <laughs> oh boy. All right, okay, so I'm going to start with cutting out the legs, as it turns out. And then I'll cut out the, um, the chest, I believe. Whoops, I'll just cut to the middle of the sprue there. See, not everyone will make the error that I almost did, cutting the sprue instead of the model, because not everybody has a camera in front of their face between that and their model. <laughs> it does make uh, for trickier work, I must admit. It really does. Alrighty. Now I'm just going to cut out the this bit and the bit off the backpack. Or the backpack, not the bit of the backpack, the backpack. I don't know why I said it that way. Yeah, there we go. Alright. I'll set that aside and I'll begin to clean this up. But while I leave that there, I think that's been long enough. Sit that 
on the base. And what I'm actually going to do is push this a little further to the back, I think, because I don't know. Mm, these legs go on to split, don't they? So maybe. Actually, I'll just center it. That way I can choose which direction I want it after the fact. See, what you could do if you were going to do something like this with uh, this particular part, you could have just blue tacked it down with you know, blue tack. And um, yeah. that way you're sort of dry fitting it where you want it. But anyway, I've taken the risk and decided to glue it down in place. I think it'll be okay. I'm just going to clean up the legs and the bits that I've cut off. So that I can move on with the next bit. Okay, that seems to be just checking. Did I miss anything on there? Oh, there's a mold line, quite a prominent mold line along the back of the leg here. Just something to be to be aware of. Probably easier if you get it now, although it's in a position where it may not be seen. Don't take off too much of that cable there. Alright, that's a bit better. How's this leg? Actually, this leg's okay. It doesn't really, it has a little bit down here, but how do I fix that? Alright. Let's clean this up. Alrighty then, set that down. Alright, let's be careful not to cut that little notch there off, because that's actually part of the cable, actually, part of the detail. Close enough, but all right. Maybe this little bit, try not to put too much pressure. Like if you're cutting the the you know the little bit from the sprue gate and that on here, just be careful. Cut this way perhaps, so you don't put extra pressure on the little uh, cable part, because you don't want that to snap. So just be mindful of where you're placing your fingers. Fairly simple, and once you, you know, if you've never really built too many miniatures like this before, it could be a bit of a learning curve, but once you've been doing it for a while, you'll, you'll sort of intrinsically pick up, oh, ooh, I've got to be careful about this, oh, this bit's going to be flimsy, watch out for that, you know, so just keep that in mind. Anyone out there who's a veteran of this sort of thing <laughs> really doesn't need to be... Uh, uh, patronized like that, I suppose they they can just uh, they can just work it out for themselves. Now I'm gonna start gluing these legs together. The key just right. Set that down. It actually goes into the front bit more than the back. I didn't realise. Okay. Let's be more careful then. Alright, get that out of the way. Just moments ago I just finished watching uh, the painting phase. Uh sake of saying, if anyone's interested. And <laughs> It was just a, an episode with, uh, you know, PG, Jeff, and if anyone was watching that previous video where I couldn't for the life of me remember the name of the third individual on their channel, and I'm so sorry to uh, to Patrick. Uh, I'm sorry I forgot your name, Patrick. Uh, not that I imagine you'd ever watch my channel, but, um, yeah, to anyone out there, Patrick, uh, the third guy on their channel. 
Anyway, it was just the three of them this time. They weren't interviewing somebody or anything, but uh, I, uh, Peachy was talking about how um, <laughs> how when he went to uh, the, I think it was the um, Warlord Games or something, uh, Open Day sort of thing, or whatever they had, um, he was there and he met some people and things and he was he had pegs with him, so he was pegging everyone. And we mean with literal clothes pegs here. We're not talking about anything else. We're talking about putting a clothes peg on somebody's clothes or like their finger, their ear, you know, that sort of bollock. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was it was funny to hear him bring that up again. And uh, yeah, it's a bit of a running joke for those that know. It, they know and it's funny. And for everyone else, it's kind of like, why are you talking about pegging? <laughs> But, um, yeah, no, it was really funny, and I enjoyed that. And it just, uh, I find watching their content really gets me going for the day. Like, you know, it really it doesn't seem no matter what, what episode it is, they always seem to talk about something that um, makes me feel good. Like, you know, being in the hobby and doing stuff. So, yeah, I just really, really appreciate their content quite a bit. Quite a bit gonna try and follow whoop don't want that much glue coming off at once just trying to follow the lines here so that it sticks better yeah all right i think that'll go on a bit better now now i can sit to that like that all right all right there it goes Something like there we are nice okay just try and stop that Sort of spider webbing stuff from happening, so try not to touch too much of the things or break it apart or separate them. Now I'm noticing this bit's not sticking as well, despite some of the glue I put on. So what I'm just going to do is go back over the gap like that from the underside. I'm not going to do it on the top side because the glue will make it through anyway. And then just gently squeeze them back together. And gently rub that out. Now, normally I would recommend you use a tissue. In fact, just one moment, I'll get one myself. <clears throat> I might just move the camera a little. Oh, sorry. It'll just bring that into focus a little better for you, I believe, this way. And then you can push it a little harder together, and then it, the, the gap, sort of the seam, just sort of starts to disappear. And as you paint over it, the paint will fill the gap as well, and the ink wash and whatever. And it will just look like a nice curve or arc in the in the material, as opposed to anything funny. Now I'm just seeing, obviously, he can't really put his foot or her foot there like that, but they could do this way, arguably, and kind of. He's just standing like like that a bit. And I could put some, you know, rubble under each of the feet a bit just to build the, the ground up or the rock up. Uh, or even like that with, yeah, okay. That's interesting. Just curious seeing how I'm going to do it. What's going to work out. See, I, I like planning my models for kit bashes, but I also like doing stuff like this where I have a general idea... Of what I want to do. I have a general idea of what's already been done. So to speak. Well what I've already done with the other cars. And so I know what I don't want to do. As well. Because I don't want to just repeat. Um, yeah. It's a bit, on the, uh, a bit of uh, off the cuff. Sort of stuff. But. Um, I like it that way. Uh, let's just say it that. I, I really appreciate doing it that way. Now, what I think I might do, because I don't have an actual example of this particular axe being used in this force, I think I'll use the axe on this one. I know that means like it has the same weapon, essentially, as the High Carl, except it looks different. So, that's okay. 
And if I did the, the other one, I'd be either repeating it with a sword or... Or maybe I should go with the sword. Because then I don't have a Carl with a sword if I don't... Uh, yeah, I'm going to use the sword. All right. I'm going to use the sword. Change my mind. Changed my mind already. Jeez, that didn't take long, did it? Like two seconds. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll use the axe. And then... <laughs> and then I don't. <laughs> oh, well. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, let's clean this up. I'm sure at some stage I'll be able to use those uh, axes for something cool anyway. Maybe even a kit bashed, uh, like, Hernkin Pioneer or something. Get off there. That was a mold line, by the way. That last little bit. What else is rubbing against? I've got this little spot. That goes in that arm and stretches out like this. I do like that pose, I must admit. Um, kind of wish I had a different uh, gun for this. So I'm thinking it might well have to have the... Um, might well have to have the plasma weapon. Maybe, just because uh, High Carl has the Volkite, so to speak. Not that I can't have repeats. I just like them to be unique if I can. So that way, even if I'm not playing the High Carl, say, as a High Carl, I can still bring it as a Carl <laughs> or whatever. and uh, Or even as Uha the Destined or whatever. Uthar or Uthar. I don't know how to pronounce it exactly, but let's just see what that looks like. Okay, it's looking okay. Hmm. Oh, that's bugging me now. Should I? Oh, should I? Shouldn't I? Should I? Shouldn't I? I don't know. Should I? Uh, I just don't know. I just don't know. What's it say on the back of this box? He does have a plasma option, at least on the back of the box. Oh, hang on. That's not even a Carl. That's the other guy. Oh, far out. So he doesn't have a plasma option. Okay. For... Sorry, I'm not showing you. See, I mistakenly thought that was the Carl as well, one of the Carl models. But it's a, uh, whatever you call them, like the equivalent of a sergeant for your, um, your warriors. And, oh, bummer. He doesn't have the plasma gun option. I could put it on him anyway. Just, you know, count it as something else. But, mmm. I don't know about that. Just don't know. You know what? I think I have to give it the plasma thing anyway. And just count it as the Volkite or the other gun. Uh, just because I want them to look different. Each to have their own little bit of personality I guess. So what I'll have to do is go into the bits box. Let's get that out. I'll show you what I'm looking at here. Okay. So now I've got quite a few parts as you can see here. These are all uh Leagues of Votan slash iron um what are they called? Uh, iron Head Squats or something from Necromunda. So I've got these ones which are from the uh, the iron here. So I think what I want is one from... Jeez, this is going to be hard to find. <laughs> Spot the plasma gun in here. Can any of you? <laughs> I don't see it. Oh, what a pain. Now I've got to actually really look through this. Okay, let's, let's be serious. Where the heck is a plasma gun? 
Let's see if I've even got one spare. I think I do. So I didn't use them all. Shoot, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing one. Oh, last. You're telling me I'm going to have to stop recording and have a look. <laughs> more like, you know, take every single part out and then be like, aha, there it is. Come back. I might have to do that. It's not looking great. All right. I'll do that. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back. Sorry for taking so long. <laughs> not that it was very long for years. Okay. Here's the options. This is the plasma one that you get, uh, the plasma gun or pistol looking thing that you get from the, uh, oh geez, what do you call this kit? Uh, the, basically the regular troops. We'll just, we'll just call them that for the second. And then this one is the larger one that you see on the iron, uh, the iron here, uh, hearth guard. Now, I'm wondering whether I should just go with the smaller version uh, and, and have that, or because it's the rule of cool and it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, part of me is like, just use the bigger one anyway, because it'll look cool. And given that the, uh, the uh, how do I say it, the regular troops, like of these guys, don't really carry a Volkite option like the Carl does, right? These Volkite options are much bigger and chunkier, like so to speak, like the uh, ones that the uh, iron here carry. So I'm thinking this sized one isn't too big, even for a Carl. So I think I'll go, like, it took me longer to find the little one, admittedly. It took me uh, about 10 minutes. But um, this one, I think, is what I'll actually end up going with because I just think it it looks better for the size of the model. Um, yeah, I just, I'm going to have to be very careful how I cut out the wrist part in here. So I'm going to try cutting that bit first. Need that bit there. Cut that out from underneath here without. See, there's this little bit right here at the end where normally the cable uh, connects for these guys. Um, I'm not sure what I'll do with that. I think I'll just cut it and then take the bit from the um, the Volkite one and just put that in instead just have it in direct with a cable. Um, I think that it'll make it more like the other one a bit, I guess. Don't want to take that part of the handle off though. It's real tricky. I'm going to have to cut a hand like halfway through, I think. As well. It's going to be a bit odd. Okay. Okay, so I've cut this little knobby bit off anyway, but I know that it kind of goes there. So let's see how this will work. Now that's where the armor bit is, so I'm just going to cut into that a little. Just a little. Because I want it to be like the smaller hand. Alright. Now. Oh. Oh, it doesn't even need that. It's got a little art bit that must go over the wrist. Yes, it does. Right. So could I arguably just use that to go over this? No, I can't. Okay. That means I have to do more work. So what I'll do... So I'll, sorry, I didn't realise I was off the camera there. I'll cut this bit right off. All the way back to here. All right, so it's like this. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I keep doing that. Um, there you go, and you can see 
know that I could probably smooth that out a bit more. Drag that a little bit, smooth that out, drag that a bit, smooth that out. Just get a lot of that out of there. Alrighty. Now comes the trickier part. I have to carefully cut all of that bit off the bottom of this gun without destroying it. Now that is going to be a pain in a moment. Now if you had a saw and all the little cool tools, which I do have, I just unfortunately I don't know where everything is right now. Because I'm kind of in a limbo state where I don't know if I'm moving soon or moving later or what. But something will be happening in a little while. And yeah, I've got some tools put away, some things are out. Uh, and depending on what project I'm working on depends on, you know, what bits and things I have lying about. So I probably don't need to clean this weapon up completely, but I'm going to just because whatever's left of it, if there is anything left of it, will go in the bits box. But I'm thinking there won't be much. So what I might actually do as well. Oh, I could leave that. I could leave that, actually. I was going to cut that little bit off, but no. I'll leave it on. What I might do, just to save myself time. Sorry, I'm not showing it. Is putting this about there. And just pushing and pulling that bit back. When I say pulling that bit back, I just mean using my thumb to put pressure on here or there, right? To make sure it leans back towards me rather than forward. Now, hmm. I've got all that top bit, so what I kind of need to do above the hand is that. Right. That side. And I'll do a bit of that on this side. Then I'll carefully make sure that this bit here is separate. Probably minutely connected it is. There we go. That's done. Cut that bit off. And then hope I can cut this fairly straight. That's better than I thought. Okay, now let's have a look at what we've got here. We've got these two bits cut out. And that's a bit long, isn't it? A bit long, a bit chunky. So I need to cut this bit out and sit the handle bit in, I think. So I'll try and smooth that little bit up now. Make it easy. Make it easier. What I might do is take that little chunk off. Do the same on the opposite side. Carefully get the blade on either side of there and just in the lip a bit. Might do that. And then again, leaving a slight rim if I can around there. But first, actually, I'll just. I might use the clippers to do that. I'll file or cut rather. File. Just cut these little bits down. Every time I'm doing all this, I'm trying not to touch this bit, this little cable. I really don't want that to bend or break. I want that to stay just as it is. Because I want to use it just as it's uh, kind of intended to be used. All right, now that's smoothed down. Just makes it easier to line this up. Now, what I'm going to do is just line it up with that little, that first little well, you can see there's two little like sort of notches on the bottom there. I'm just going to line the clippers straight up with that and try and get it as straight as I can. And then just go like that. Very simple. Then I just carefully keep myself back and just cut this down a bit. Make it all nice and smooth. And then the same at the top, because it's not quite even up there at the moment. Put that back a bit. I'm 
then let's have a look at these together now. That's a little bit better than it was. However, it's still not right. So I've got to unfortunately cut away a little bit more. And this bit's a little bit more tricky because I don't want it to fall in and damage that finger and the trigger joint. So I'm just gently, very slowly, as you can tell, just moving that together. And then bang, that bit's gone. There's a bit of a rise on one side. That's okay. I'll just gently do that and then get the, the blade. Carefully cut the notches back so it's fairly smooth. Now, if you wanted to make it extra smooth, you could of course get your uh, files out and um, do a better job than I'm doing of this. Uh, in fact, I'd recommend you do that. You'll get a better result, and therefore you, you'll be happier with your model. So I'll just clean up that bit off the gun that's been bugging me. And that little mold line along here. Let's get rid of that. Maybe that little bit on the bottom is close enough. Okay. Let's move some of these excess little cut-off bits out of the way. And just see all these little bits of plastic. It's handy to have a little vacuum or something around that you can tidy all that up with because you don't want it uh, getting around like, you know, in on your hands and then you start touching things and then you put stuff everywhere and you never know you might end up with plastic in your food or you might inhale it or whatever like, you know just be careful and remember that you are working with with plastics and plastics can be toxic just like the glues and everything else just yeah just be mindful right. every time i leave that down without the cover on i think shit am i gonna hurt myself Right, see these little uh, sort of uh, round pieces uh, in the detail there on the gun? I'm wishing that they were kind of flattened off like and cut out. Uh, I I really wish I had that. There's those extra like millimeter or two uh, up into the housing here. So I might just cut into the point there a bit, just sort of gently, just a tiny bit just to give it something and then I'll come along to this bit and just try to gently cut into that with the tips of this because I don't want it to cut or bend this thing off too much or anything. I suppose if it comes off I can get another bit from one of the others ultimately uh, one of the other spares so it's not the end of the world but I'd rather not have to deal with that. I can get it to do what I want without stuffing up. That would be better. Alrighty. I'm finding that rather difficult in there now. To cut. It's really not wanting to. I hope I'm not damaging any detail. language there we go alrighty now that's a little bit closer to the thing well, let's have a look when we whack this in and if there's really any issue with that trying to fit I guess I could sort of swipe a little off the end there to give it that bit of an angle that bit's got to go over it as well mm, yeah I think that's okay like there is a bit of a gap but we can fill that gap and it does allow that to sit in place I think if I do that yeah now let's put a little glue yeah 
Peace. And we'll get the hand. Hand trigger. Yep, and just set it. Then, I'll take that down, I'll take this, just like that, just like a little bit of glue, and like that, right on, in place. Now that little cable is going to go right onto that little spot, and I'll just put a bit of glue between. Here's my bit of tissue to clean up, any overspill. Now, it's not the best way to do it. It'd be better to just put the glue directly onto that spot. But, like I say, I'm in a hurry. I'm just trying to get it to sit right at the moment. So, I think that's pretty good. I'm also finding that gap isn't so big now, neither, with the uh, part in place. It's kind of, the glue and the bits of plastic are kind of filling it on its own. So, that helps a bit. So there we go, there's the uh, car now with a, plas with a plasma gun, which, you know, isn't technically legal, but, uh, or games, tournament legal sort of thing, but I mean, as long as you tell your opponent, you know, in my opinion, at least when it comes to the rule of cool and doing what you want, I personally think that it's fine to change a weapon around like that, just so long as you tell your opponent what weapon it is that you're using on the model, like, before game, and you keep reminding them throughout that, you know, this is a such and such, you know, like, it's just, it looks like this. All right. Let's go for a glue in there. And we'll take the miniature, and how will we have the gun? Will we have the gun pointing down like the other Carl? We have it pointed just out. I think it has to look down. I really do. Like that. I really think it has to be like that. And, uh, yeah. I think that looks fairly unique. Excuse me. Whew. Alrighty. For a second. Him, them, they. I did say this was going to be a uh, a female, a woman. So probably should have said she. Now I think I want to use this. Um, this head actually like I do like this one like I said before looks a bit like a reminds me of something uh, you know Cardassian or whatever like because of the ridges minus the spoon in the middle I really like her face but I like this one because it's got the little sort of mechanical bit on the side of the face there I really like that I think it looks sick and I think it would look better for the Carl. Um, although, even without it, that looks that looks pretty nice. What should I do? <laughs> now I'm troubled as to what to do. Like, obviously, if I use this head, I have to raise it a little uh, by getting maybe one of the other heads similar to this and just cutting the bottom round bit off and sticking it under it and just raising the... You know, giving it a neck, basically. Uh, so when it sits in the uh, in the well there, and that uh, bit in the in the neck piece there, that it will look proper and be at the right height. This one will do that straight away for me, and I do like the ridges. I think they look cool. Helps them look a little bit less entirely human, and maybe a little more engineered. Um, Still human, but, you know, kind of makes them look a little Xeno-slight. Oh, I don't know what I want to do. Oops. That would be cool. But I think I'll just go with this one. I think I'll just go with this one. 
it's just easier this time. I know I'll go with the rule of cool, but this time it, it, I'm just going to do that. I think a little bit less work. Better get my bit of thing under there. Alrighty. Let's see. Now I get the head. Whoop. Turn it around the right way for one. Should be out there looking at the sword from the angle. I think so, but then that's the same as the others. Or oh, maybe it should just look the other way. The opposite sort of thing. So it's like, she's like, Ehh. yeah, I'm thinking like that. And then she's looking off to the side a bit. That's what I reckon. And I think she'll stand like this. Yeah, I think that actually looks pretty darn good. Now, got to work out how exactly I'm putting this on. But I think I'm doing something to get that on there. Hmm, let's see. Yeah, yeah, that's likely what I'm going to do. Alright, either way, I need to put this little bit of piping on him, I guess. Or her, rather. That's an important part, and that needs to go on. I think I may have cut a little too much off this bit for it to sit on properly, which worries me. I think I did. I think I made that error. But oh well. Yeah, and that had some other bits on it. Mm. Maybe I could repurpose this one. Let's have a look. No, they're more for the pine here. I suppose I could just put it on and just tidy it up a bit. That's what I'll do. I'm just going to go back over and tidy some of these bits that I've slightly damaged. I've been trying to use this for something else before. I'll just clean it up. Make it look nice and new and clean. When it's painted, it won't be half as obvious, but... Deal with it like that. Just want to make that nice and thin. Under there. And then we've got that in there. Alright. And then it's finished. Alright. Let's clean this little bit. I hate cleaning things like this. So small and the slightest little bit of pressure too much and you just snap. The little wire or you snap the little tip of it or something and then you're like ah oh, damn it's not what I wanted to do so try to avoid damaging it and just do it carefully perhaps right. now I can't remember quite how to attach that bit so let's have a look at that instructions eh? alright might have been easier to do before I put the arm on, but um, we'll see. <laughs> All right, let's put a tiny dab of glue in that little bit. Where... Oh, bit too much. Quickly get this and use that to absorb it up and get it off the surface of the armor there. We don't want that getting wrecked. At least part of it's going to be covered anyway, so it doesn't matter if it ran a little. And where does it connect to? Up here on the backpack, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it connects to this bit. Alright, let's put some glue on there. Alright, get that out of the way. Alright, let's... Let 
goes in there, and that goes on there. All right. Yeah, that went on really easily, actually. That didn't cause much of a problem. Good. I like that. I stick this on. I know that's not quite right. Like, I mean, like, it's meant to have a bit of a bit more of a thing there for it to hold on to on the back of the armor there. But, um, well, the collar. Shall we say? But I'm just going to deal with it as it is. And if I feel it needs a little putty or something around it just to make it look a little better, then I'll put that in later. But yeah, oh, it keeps falling off. So what I probably should have done initially is put the glue on the surface and wait. Give it that little bit of time. And then push it in. Raise it up a little. Just hold that and still. All right. I think that's gone on quite uh, nicely. Just trying to make sure it's not too you know, on an angle or anything, because the the headpiece isn't exactly on it straight, um, as straight as I'd like it anyway. Uh, so I'm just going to give it a little over adjustment to help make that not stand out so much. Oh, now it's tilting, but we don't want that. Stay way I need you to go down. Yeah, ah, uh, yeah. Really doesn't want to stay there. All right. Now it'll do it. That's close enough. Uh, hang on. I'll just have a stand in. Kind of like that. So what I might do, is lean <laughs> like that, try and find another little bit of uh, rocky stuff that can be pretty flat, like this, a little bit. I'm just going to cut this off here. Right. It's not entirely necessary to do this, but it's what I'm going to do. Again, I suppose... All this kit bashing is not at all necessary, but it's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to sit that sort of in in there, and I'll put some more putty and stuff around the bits. But the whole point of me putting that there, I think it's just to give her a little bit more of a footing so that her feet both are off the base. So I can just fill that little raised bit in, you know, and behind here I can just put some of the texture paint or plastic putty in there first and then texture paint over it, whatever I choose to do. Sometimes I just put the texture putty, uh, texture paint in there because, you know, you can, you kind of will just fill the gap. And I don't mean the cracking variety, I mean like the sort of sandy or muddy variety. Probably a better spot. Built it up. And you can see, I want that foot there and that foot there, sort of. There we are. Just stretch this bit back out like that, maybe. Probably better to have it like that. And then that covers the little hole up here with the foot. And that bit just. Ah! That actually, let's put a bit of glue in that crater like that, and then just a little glue over there because that's probably all going to be where that foot, other foot is. Get rid of that so there's no spider webbing. Whoop! I don't want that. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Oh, come on! Yes, stay. Damn it.
and uh, there we there we basically have it. Just a slight bit more of a push to the side, so they're not she's not quite on the edge of the base entirely. And she's up with her angle and that, and looking cool. I think anyway. I think she looks quite nice like this. I've got to put her shoulder pad on too. That's a bit I've missed. I've completely missed this shoulder. Alrighty. Let's get that out. Let's clean it up. Mm -hmm. Get that onto the model. I think that looks right. I think that's about right. Just on there. Yes. There we have it. My final, or third and final Carl, as far as I know, at this point anyway, would be my last of the Carls for now, in case they come out with like a new kit or something like that later on. And there we go. I really think she's turned out quite nicely. And I'll look, certainly look forward to painting her up. I've got to paint up... This other Carl over here too, so you know, there's, there's a bunch of work I'm, I'm going to have to do. But yeah, I think that's turned out quite nicely. I'll give you another look at her in, in just a moment. Next to the other couple of Carls in their various stages of progression. Let's get these spare parts out of the way. Yeah, what do you think of what I've done? Do you like it? Do you think it's bad? Do you think I could improve? Like, you know, it'd be interesting to see what you have to say. Let's get these together. Get her like that. Him pointing forward. And maybe the high Carl in the middle. There we go. Let's bring this down. Whoops. And adjust the camera. Well, there we go. All three of my Carls. What do you think? Do you like them? Do you think I'm uh, <laughs> over-investing in my Carls, perhaps? Do you think that maybe using such a unique model like this one, the Carl Jot Grendok, uh, you know, as a unique model and then keep bashing it, do you think that's kind of sacrilegious? <laughs> Don't know. It'd be interesting to know, anyway. And if you did like the content that um, I've produced here uh, today, then uh, please, please uh, give us a subscription and uh, a like, and put some comments down below. I'd like to know what you think, and you know maybe what you're collecting. Give us a little information about what you're into and uh, what you're working on at the moment. Uh, that if you're working on anything, that is, or what you'd like to be working on if you could. Be nice to know and it'd be good for us all to have a little discussion that way we can all share a little bit more of our own hobby experiences and um yeah help others uh, come up with new creative ideas keep the hobby juices flowing anyway i thank you very much for your time here today at griffinix tabletop miniatures i really appreciate you joining us and um, whatever you did, whether you watched the whole video or you skipped through, I appreciate you. <laughs> I really do. I've been your host, Matt the Hat. I'll catch you in the next one.